Hi, I'm Stuart Addison and this is a follow-up to my video from last year on producing binary identical builds of Eclipse Temerin. Since then we've started shipping SBOM files, it's software bill of materials for those who don't know about it, and that contains information on what bits were used to build the product and which options and so on. Uh, so it includes all the build options, the compiler version for both the Boot JDK and the C compiler. Now, on Linux, we have the ability to pull down that SBOM information and then run, configure the machine and then run a build using it and then uh, do a compare. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to start up a completely clean Docker container. We do the builds on the platform that I'm using here, which is uh, Linux ARM64 using CentOS 7. So I'm just going to start up a Docker image for CentOS 7. So from there, I've got a script that can do the comparison. Now I'll show you the details a bit later, but for now I will just pull it down. Um, to start it, I'm going to run it with minus X just so you can see some of the things that are going on. Uh, compare Linux, and then you give it the what is the SBOM metadata file. Now at the moment, the metadata file is the one we need to use because that has all the information. The non-metadata file is the one that will include all the information later, but at the moment we have to use the metadata file. In a future version of the script, it'll be uh, the main SBOM, which can be retrieved through the API. Now for the purposes of this, I'm going to use the metadata file from JDK 1707, which is the one that we've only just released in April 2023. Uh, so I'm going to run that and store it, the output and compare 17.log. So I'll kick it off now. It will start by installing a number of packages that are needed. These are the main ones needed for you know make, unzip, and other parts of the build process and so on. So we'll go again and get that. And bear in mind, this is running from a completely clean CentOS system. So there's uh, nothing else that is needed on the machine apart from the things that are being installed by the script. Mostly things like glibc headers and so on, and sort of a lot of the default things. Um, although you probably saw in that command above the install command that was pulling in GCC, we will not be using the GCC that it's installing. We will install our own version of GCC, which matches the one that it was used for the original build that's included in the SBOM, that's referenced in the SBOM at least. Uh, so it's now pulling down the boot JDK that we need, because that's the other thing that's included in the SBOM is the exact version of the boot JDK, so we can make sure that we're using exactly the same version to ensure reproducibility. You can see here now it's pulling down the compiler, which is the version that we use. Uh, we keep our own versions of each compiler um, so that people can deploy that onto different operating systems if they so desire. So in this case, it's using GCC 10.3, which was the version that was originally used for that JDK 17 build. It's now cloning the Temerin build repository. Everything's already done that now. And it then pulls down the, ori the original version so it can do a comparison against it. So it's just pulled from the API, the, the version that we want to do the comparison with. And so now it's going away and uh, downloading the JDK 17 code base directly from GitHub. This will take a few minutes. Now the idea of what I'm trying to show here is that it is relatively straightforward to completely configure a clean system to be able to fully build, rebuild Temerin in exactly the same way as we do. Um, why would you want to do this? Um, in order to verify that nothing has got into the the setup of the machine or anything other than what is pulled down by these configuration files. Um, so if any of our machines had for some reason got compromised, you would be able to run a, ver run a build of your own and verify that it comes out exactly the same. Uh, and so if our machines or your machines were compromised, you would get different, you would expect to get differences. At the moment, I think as I called out in the previous video for JDK 17, there's a couple of things that won't come out identical in the class data sharing files. Um, that will still be the case at the end of uh, this demonstration here. Uh, that has, I believe that's been resolved in the head stream, so JDK uh, 20 at the moment uh, won't have those differences. So there it goes, it's extracted the code base. 
um, it's extracted the particular tag that we want to build uh, and it's now going through and running the configure line which is um, again using the information that came from the SBOM in terms of exactly which configuration options to use and so on. So this is the normal configure phase just showing you all the detection that it's doing and everything. And this machine, you can see there I've got a, I've got a fairly large machine here, it's uh, 160 cores, uh, 512 gig of RAM, this is a, an Ampere Ultra system, uh, which is just a, a good choice for running a demo like this where you don't want it to, to take too long. So it's going to take a few minutes to go through the build. So while I was looking at that, I'm going to switch to um, another window that is showing the actual script that I'm running here. So it's got the Ant version configured, now the Ant version Although Ant isn't used for the Java build itself, it is used for the SBOM generation, uh, which is part of the build process now. And um, because we're repeating the whole build process, it will include the SBOM generation. Uh, this is a section that installs the prex, which we saw earlier. And there's a function to download Ant. So these are the two things we've called there: install prex and download Ant. So the first thing it does, as we said, is downloads the SBOM from the URL that you pass into the script. Uh, determines the it parses the SBOM metadata file. Now the SBOM metadata file isn't in a particularly consumable format at the moment. Once we get all that information into the main SBOM, it will be in a much nicer format. So we do have to uh, do some slightly messy parsing of the metadata file at the moment. But basically, we're pulling out the boot JDK version, which you can see uh, into that variable the GCC version into that variable, uh, the local GCC directory, which is where we actually store the compiler uh, when we download and extract it, it goes somewhere under user local uh, into a, a GCC directory. Uh, and then we get the some of the other information about the Tamarin build. So that's the uh, configuration, the configure arguments and things like that. We need to determine the native API architecture because we're pulling down the build to do a comparison from we want to use the correct parameters into the adopt API in order to pull down the build for comparison. Uh, it will then pull down the boot JDK if required which it does at the end of that line. Scroll over there it's just doing a download from the adopt API and extracting it and then doing the same for the GCC version. It's then cloning the Tamarin build repository, which is the one that has all our build scripts in it. So we can actually just run it through basically the same process as we would on our official build machines. So you can run these quite easily on your local system or your local Docker image in the case that I'm using just now. So it checks out the exact SHA of the Tamarin build repository because we want to make sure that uh, we're using exactly the same scripts and at the same versions that were used during when we did the original build. Uh, that's again, it comes from the S1 metadata file. Uh, set the CC and CXX flags to the correct compiler that we want to use, which is the one that we downloaded earlier. Uh, set some path variables. Uh, that was just a, an LS sort of for debug information to show you exactly which version of the compiler and Java C it's using. This is the line that downloads from the original tarball for comparison purposes. And that's pulling it from the API. And then it's printing out the command it's going to run, which is this make JDK any platform .sh, which comes from the Tamarin build repository uh, with all the appropriate arguments on it. Yeah, it's just going to feed that to uh, Michelle. So once it's, uh, that's what it's doing at the moment in my other window. It's uh, oops, not far off complete now, it's onto the SBOM phase. Uh, but yes, once it's finished that, what it's going to do is it will extract the tarball that it's just created during the new build uh, into that directory, and then it will do a diff against JDK Tamron version, which is the one that's downloaded, and this one, which is the one that's extracted from the tarball that it has just built. And it will show you the differences. So if I go back to here now, uh, you'll see that's the comparison phase starting there. So it's extracting the one that we've extracted from the tarball that we've created, which should be the same as the one we downloaded from as far as possible. And you can see that the 
output we've got here is there's a couple of there's some extra information in the release file, um, uh, but the as I said the class the shared class file is the only thing that is different between the two versions. So yeah, if you want to try and reproduce your own build of Temurin, this is that's how to do it using that script, and I will put the link to that script in the comments or the description of this video. Thanks for listening.